Okay, so there's 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 like the simple version, which I think you know it's like so there's really there's stock based comp and there's dilution. The dilution thing, that's a red herring. We're we're not issuing a lot of new shares. I think it's like in the nine million dollar range, yep. and so it would be a little coy of me to say uh, that's like no issue, move on. The 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 thing to understand about Palantir, and then I'll, I want to just hit this is like it's actually not the result of the DPO. It's the result of the fact that we were completely focused on building product. We had no earthly idea we were going to DPO till like right before we did it. And so most companies are, I mean, quite frankly, built so that the you know when analysts look at it, the primary customer of most software companies is not the client; it's the software analyst. So it's like we we obviously our primary client are our clients, which doesn't mean you know. And now we're thinking about how do we expose the data in a way that you know people on the outside like you and professional analysts and others can look at the data and get a better sense of what's tracking, what's not tracking. But the primary source of a lot of these like questions really comes down to. Look, we built the company to support the U.S. warfighter primarily, and then do take dual use it for the glory of humanity, particularly humanity in the West. And that was our idea, and because that the primary our primary client was not what uh, you know someone at a hedge fund would think, we didn't actually think of these things from inception, and so so now there's a process of normalization. You're going to see that in going forward on these calls. It's like how do you normalize? How do you provide? data that people can look at, how do you provide data that people can understand, uh, that they're used to seeing while simultaneously staying true to what our, our, our mission is. It's like our primary clients are the people we're serving. We're in full line with, the, with them. And that's why we survive. Even with the nascent sales force, you can get things to double, it, it is a, which is insane. So then you get to stock-based comp, uh, which is like, okay, so in there's two, there's two parts of it. Of course, IRI people, kind of don't want me to do any kind of forward-looking math, but, you know, if you're smart enough to invest in Palantir, you're smart enough to figure out there's essentially, uh, there's the, what does, what, what are, how are we comping people? And there, there will be a normalization that will get us into a range where you would see in a software company within the next 18 months, latest two years. But there's a, essentially, and that, that's going to take, that's going to take a little time. It is going to happen because it's also very much linked to another question, which is how do you actually run the company so it's profitable someday on a gap basis, not stripping out comp. And that, that is also within eyesight. And those are, those are goals for Palantir because same reason we have no debt, same reason we have $2.3 billion on our balance sheet. This is a company built for bad times. Bad times mean strong finances internally. And that means at some point you have to be gap profitable. You can't be gap profitable if you're diluting people or what you, correctly, uh, your, high, your, stat, your, 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 your stock-based comp is totally at, is, is not in conformity with other companies. So you're seeing a normalization, this will change. It will change in, in the relatively near future. It'll be linked to other things that we believe are important for Palantir, like having a company that thrives in bad times. And we are, you know, bad times are very good for Palantir because we build products that are robust, that are built for danger. And then the finances internally are actually built for bad times. And bad times means you, you have free cash flow. The free cash flow turns into gap profit. That means the stock-based comp has to be one that's aligned with our investors. Also, because that's basically, you know, it's part of a little bit longer philosophical narrative. But like, if if, if software is the only moat, then value and gross shares have to be evaluated in terms of their value. Value only exists if you can actually get a tech moat, call it that maybe it's something besides. And growth only exists if you build a company that is where the technology is strong enough, the business fundamental is strong enough that the free cash flow actually turns into gap profitability, and that's linked to stock risk. So this is, a, this is a priority both because you care, but also, quite frankly, because it's for, it, it is the health of our company, which we care a lot about.